Welcome to another video tutorial from 3dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer version 2 to create a mandala using symbols, the pencil tool, tapered strokes and the flood fill tool to color it in later. The video is based on a design and a question by Kaylin Chabot. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. How to color in a design that is based on lines and strokes rather than shapes. This is my reference sketch. I set it to a low opacity and lock that layer. I work in my design layer and start with a circle that encompasses the whole design. I turn this circle into a symbol. This way I just work on a section of the design duplicate it and all symbols will take on the changes I make instantly. I set up the pressure curve for my solid stroke to create the tapered line I use with the pencil tool. I make sure I work within the symbol and start drawing the lines with a pencil tool. For smoother lines and less nodes, I have the stabilizer turned on. For this video, I use my graphic tablet to draw. It creates flowing lines a little easier than using the mouse. I set the circle I created as a guide to 0% opacity. Its main purpose is to rotate the duplicates of my symbol without having to worry about adjusting the pivot point. In order not to accidentally work in a different symbol, I group all my duplicates and lock that group. As you can see, once I draw more lines, they are are automatically added to all copies of the symbol. To make my design look more consistent, I use a thicker line and a thinner line that is half the width of the thicker line and try to stick to just those two stroke widths. For linear patterns, it's easier to use the pen rather than the pencil tool. You can add shapes text or images to your mandala design. In this case, I'm just sticking to a few circles and more lines. I duplicate and mirror the dots and place them on the other side. Once I zoom out, you can see the whole design and the advantage of working with symbols. I only had to draw one of the eight segments. For the flower pattern in the center, I used the same approach. I draw one half, make it a symbol and duplicate and mirror that symbol. I adjust the pressure curve to taper to just one end. Affinity Designer will use that setting for my next strokes. Seeing I want straight lines in the center, I switch to the pen tool. I group the lines of the inner design and turn them into a symbol. Duplicate that symbol, mirror it and place it on the left side. Once you have your lines in place, it's easy to adjust them with the node tool. I won't even attempt to draw the perfect circle. That's what the circle tool is for. I add two circles with no pressure curve and the wider stroke. With all the major shapes in place, it's time to fine tune, adjust and connect the lines. With the snapping turned on, it's easy to align objects. Moving the inner part, the red line indicates that the object is centered. The same applies for the nodes. Moving the nodes into the same position turns them red. I remove some of the unevenness. Even with the smoothing turned on, there are excess nodes that I don't really need. Drawing with the pencil and the pen tool, adjusting with the node tool and placing elements in symbols made it quick and easy to create the mandala pattern. When working on more complex designs, remember to save often and save in new versions of the file. Let's start adding color. When I select one of the lines and give it a fill color, it will connect the first and the last node 
of that line. It won't fill the logical shape that I created, which would be the whole leaf. It's different with the circles as they are closed shapes. They take on the fill color without problems. There are different ways to approach this problem. One would be to create a new layer underneath the line art and create shapes for the colors. I create a new layer, call it color, place it below my line art and use the pen tool to create new vector shapes for the colors. Just like the line art, I create a symbol from this shape, adjust the pivot point, duplicate and rotate it so I have the symbols in place for all parts of the mandala design. I can now work in just one of the symbols and all the others will adjust automatically. I duplicate the shape, rescale, adjust the colors, use the node tool to place the shape within the line art, repeat the process to color that leaf, add gradients, add more decoration to quickly color the whole design. Alternatively, I can use the vector flood fill tool in version 2. It will detect closed areas and fill them with a new shape in the color that you chose. For this process to work reliably, I convert all strokes to curves and combine them into a single shape. Expanding the stroke in one symbol will apply the effect on all others. One of these zigzag lines did not get converted and went missing, so I duplicate one of the shapes over to fill the gap, adjust it with the node tool and complete the pattern again. I repeat the process for the lines in the inner symbol, which automatically expands the lines on the left side as well. The results are a lot of notes. That leaves me with the circles. They are still circles with a stroke and I will turn those strokes into curves as well by expanding them. And now I just have vector shapes with fills and no strokes. I can now adjust the stroke and the fill color, setting it to no stroke and a bright magenta fill color to make sure that all my shapes are selected. By ungrouping these symbols I turn the whole content of each symbol into individual shapes that I can now combine using the boolean head to create one single curve. It helps to select all shapes not just the symbols. I forgot about the circles. So I select those and do the boolean again and the result is one single curve within my line art layer. I select the vector flood fill tool and click on an area in between the outlines. It will fill that area, create a new shape below my line art and give me easy to edit vector shapes. I can apply different colors, gradients, or expand these areas using the contour tool. I can now go through the shapes and fill them one by one, picking one color and filling all the shapes in the same color. For this video, I just cut it short and show you the end result. Keep in mind that the flood fill tool works with closed shapes, not visually enclosed like this fish. The fins are closed, but if I look at the wireframe, those are all open shapes. The flood fill tool will not react to. As with most vector design tasks, there are multiple ways to approach a problem using hand-drawn vector shapes 
and using the vector flood fill tool are two quick and easy options. In this video, I used symbols, the pencil tool along with the pen tool, tapered strokes and the vector flood fill tool as one of the options to color the shapes to create a colorful mandala design. If you haven't used symbols before, I would recommend looking at some of the basic tutorials and the mini videos I created on the topic. They are fun and helpful and give you an idea what can be achieved with symbols. Play around with it and have fun creating your own designs. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like and a comment below and I will see you again soon.